Hello, this is Lorna from Whitam URC with another midweek Keeping Connected video. Do you ever get the feeling that God is definitely trying to tell you something? Recently, three different sources have all been giving me different messages on the same theme. Transition. It started just after Easter with a Bible reading about Jesus appearing to seven of the disciples when they were fishing on Lake Galilee. Jesus had been raised to life and they had seen him several times, but he hadn't yet ascended to the Father. It was transition time for the disciples, a time for them to wait for the Holy Spirit to empower them. They were, of course, devastated when Jesus was killed and they lost their leader and friend of three years. That phase of their life had gone and they were waiting for the next phase to begin. Not that they knew what form it would take, of course. The notes commented that transitional times, when the old has gone and the new has not yet emerged, are difficult. And I thought, hmm, it's a bit like that for all of us at the moment, isn't it? Because our old life has gone, but the new life has not yet emerged. What will the new normal be like? I think we're all aware that when we resume normal, life, whatever that might be, we won't be able to pick up life exactly where we left it off in February last year. We are, not by choice, stuck in transition, in between. A few days later I read something entitled It's OK to Dream, the essence of which was that if our heart is in full submission to God, then it's good for us to get excited about our, our ideas, our hopes, our dreams because God will work out his purposes as we pray into them. And if he chooses to use us, then he'll equip us with whatever we need. Wisdom, grace, favour, everything. Now, most of us could name several negatives when it comes to waiting. I certainly can. Frustration, a waste of time, and so on. But this came with a list of positives. There are two I'd like to mention. Firstly, during waiting time, God prepares us and circumstances. Secondly, it gives us time to seek the Lord's face diligently and to grow in godly character and wisdom in order to handle the blessing when it comes. That's amazing, isn't it? In order to handle the blessing when it comes. I thought about that. Allowing God to, re re sorry, to refine our plans and to work in his way, in his timing, encourages humility. So then we will give God the glory due to him for what he has done. He may have inspired us and used us, but it's all his work, not ours. The waiting time almost forces us to rely totally on him so that we will acknowledge the blessing we receive as the plans unfold because our undeserved grace. And we will be hopefully less tempted to look on it as our achievement. Where if that was the case, we might pass on the glory, but keep the praise. God wants the praise and the glory. The following day for a totally different source was a devotional on the same theme, but highlighting a different aspect. The importance of awaiting God's guidance before moving and of focusing not on what we are waiting for, very easily done, or our plans to take shape, but on him. In the sure and certain knowledge, not only that he has the best plans for us, but that nothing can thwart his plans. So his power, strength and wisdom bring confidence and encouragement. So is this time of transition just time to dream of the future? There's a saying that goes, some people dream of success while other people get up every morning and make it happen. An alternative, very similar, is some people dream of success while others get up every morning and work hard for it. We know that God's kingdom is topsy-turvy. We may dream of the future, a future, of, a future where God's kingdom is universal. That's good. And yes, we need to be proactive in it and work hard. But, big but, we don't make it happen. Not us. God does. And he will. We work hard after we have spent time listening. 
waiting to hear his guiding voice, so we are sure we are not working out our dreams, our plans, but his. It's not always easy to differentiate. It is clear from God's word that he wants justice for the oppressed. He wants the hungry to be fed. He wants the weary hearted and grieving to be comforted, the sick to be healed. But how does that play out day by day in my life, in the life of our fellowship? There was a time that the church filled many of many gaps in the provision for people, but huge gaps are opening up again. We cannot do or be everything for anyone. Sorry, we cannot do or be everything for everyone. So how do we target our help? Well, again and again, I'm hearing, abide in me, rest in me, seek me with all of your heart, put me first, not the church, not even the poor or hungry, but me. Focus on me, getting your heart absorbed into mine so my heart absorbs yours, so that your love is my love, your actions are me working through you, and your words, my words. Lockdown for many has been incredibly busy while others are bored or, or worse, lacking human interaction. But I'm aware that I for one really need to give as much time as possible to seeking God wholeheartedly. And not just in isolation, but with others as well. After all, that's what the early disciples did when they were waiting for the promised Holy Spirit. And look what happened. Jesus told us that when we seek God, we will find him. So I pray that we will all individually and together seek God and his will passionately in the sure knowledge that we will find him and his will. I also saw this this morning. And it is all about dreaming. So look in your Lent pack. It's brilliant. Good ideas about dreaming for God's will and God's purpose for ourselves, for people we know, for our fellowship, for the whole world. Bless you. See you soon. Goodbye.